The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report. It's Dom here. I'm sorry, it's another replay today. However, I have lined up a lot of great stuff for later in the week. Andrew Hansen's back to look back uh, on the raw dogging challenge we sent you last week. We got a lot of emails about it. No one has claimed to have listened to the entire thing and said it's a video, although some of you did say you went to sleep listening to that episode, which I find entirely plausible. So Andrew's back, I think, tomorrow. And then later in the week, we'll take a good look at the DNC with some of our favourite US politics experts as Joe Biden says farewell and Kamala Harris tries to step up to the plate. Today, we're going to do one of those things where we gloat about being right. I'm sorry, it's annoying, but I'm quite proud of this one. I guess when you do a daily podcast, it stands to reason that occasionally, occasionally you're going to get with a trend somewhat. And this is all about institutification, um, a theory invented by Cory Doctorow last year, whereby he's talking about platforms like Facebook and uh, you know, Snapchat and Instagram and whatever. And his theory was that they start by being good to their users and giving a good experience. Then they're good to to the businesses who pay them, so their advertisers, to the expense of users. But then they're bad to their advertisers as well as their users and try and capture all the value for themselves. He says that all platforms basically decline in this manner over time and he called it inshittification. They become crapper over time seemed pretty good to us. But we said in October last year, hang on, Corey, isn't that happening with everything? With everything. Everything's turning shit over time. Nothing is good anymore. And here's the thing. Corey Doctorow actually wrote an article this year after our podcast arguing that we were entering the in scene, the period where everything becomes crap. We kind of meant it as partly a satirical joke. He's arguing it more seriously. However, I'm still claiming that we got to it first. Everything is turning crap. That's the subject of today's podcast looking back at our argument uh, about that, the inshittification of everything, but also our campaign to get inshittify into the dictionary. And while it might not be in the Macquarie Dictionary yet, it is in Wikipedia. And it was, according to the American Dialect Society, the word of the year in 2023. So I'm going to claim that as a win as well. Did we have anything to do with any of that? Yeah, probably not. However, that's never stopped us from claiming victories before. Let's claim this one. I'm starting to miss Charles a little bit. I don't know whether you are. If you're missing Charles, I'll send him an email and me as well, podcast at chaser.com.au. And tell him to come back, the lazy sod. I'm expecting him back uh, early next month. Anyway, let's look back on how everything is turning crap, a common theme of this podcast, and indeed the shitification of everything. It all kicks off after this ad. Dom, I've got a bit of a task for us and all the listeners. Oh, great. Okay. You're putting us to work. Yes, because a listener emailed us actually a few weeks ago, but I've only just uh, read the email. And it turns out that one of the words that we used on a podcast back in August, which was we were talking about the enchitification of Twitter. Oh, that's right. And then yeah. we extended it to the enchitification of everything. It was one of those yes. one of those bleak episodes that we tend to specialise in here at the Chaser Report. Yeah. So that had such a profound impact on one of our listeners that he then immediately emailed the Macquarie Dictionary. Yeah. And said, you need to put enchitification into your dictionary. It's such a great word. That's such a great accolade. Yeah, it's a cultural moment. It needs to be codified in the dictionary. And they wrote back and said, look, uh, we note that the word enchitification was not in fact invented by the chaser, but in fact by uh, Cory Doctorow. Yes, the fantastic, I don't even know what you call him, writer and kind of internet theorist. But they said outside of Cory and the chaser, we can't find a single (laughs) reference to the term enchitification, but they'll put it on their watch list, and if over the next 12 months uh, it starts being used more, then they'll put it in their dictionary. This is the kind of challenge we can get behind. I think this is the enchitification of a nation. And it's worth noting, Charles, that Cory Doctorow, when he originally used the term, he used it about that exact thing, which is why I enjoyed it so much and brought it to the table, about how Twitter and other social networks, in fact, become shit over time. It's like a basic process that over time mm. they just become terrible. Every social network I've ever joined has become terrible with the passing of time, except Instagram, which was terrible when it began, I feel. But, yeah, it's, it's just a thing that happened. Well, it's not just a thing that happens. I read his article this morning. What his actual point is is that actually enchitifying actually happens to platforms when you yourself, the user, is actually the product. And his point is that if the platform is merely just trading your eyeballs for advertisers or 
sellers or whatever it is. Um, so he uses both the example of TikTok or yeah. Twitter or things like that, but he also uses the example of Amazon, right, and says, well, they've built up this amazing platform where they subsidised everything to get everyone on there, and then they're just trading the eyeballs to make huge amounts of money off you, right? Well, just to, as a footnote, it's worth this is actually a theory that I've come across before, that Amazon is not actually um, just a buying and selling platform. It's a social network for what humans are interested in. and that, So mm. they have the best data of anyone on the planet about what people want. Yeah. That's so valuable to them that they sell things at a discount to get it. Oh, and they treat their work as a bomb and oblivious as well. So if the users themselves are the product that are being sold, then eventually every corporate capitalist enterprise will just go, okay, how can we make it more and more worse for the user to juice our profits, right? Yeah. So that's the incentivization principle. But I think that we can actually widen the use of this term. Yes, absolutely. Because what it's referring to essentially is monopolistic control of things, right? So it doesn't just apply to social networks. It can also apply to things like political parties. If you look at the Australian political system, you go the incentivization of Australian politics is entirely bound up in the fact that there is a sort of duopoly effect where you've got the coalition or the Labor. There really is only two choices and there's a sort of lock-in thing where you've got to go with one or the other, both sides know that, and so incitification ensues. That you see what is I mean? Sh- you, I, I think that's a shot article, Charles. <laughs> yeah, I really right. do. The shot.net.au. Yeah. But no, but you're quite right. And the point is, you see this from Labor all the time. Mm. They can take 80% of their base for granted yes. because they've got nowhere else to go. They don't want to go to the Greens. I can just imagine Greens people go, like Tom Ballard going, oh, what about the Greens? They're so pure. And so on. They can afford to be pure because they don't have to win government, right? Yeah. And so basically built into Labor's business model now yes. is disappointing 80% of their supporters yeah. to go after the people in the marginal seats. To inshitify their product yes. to actually thrive. Because they don't need those voters anymore. Yeah. So they can just abandon them and have a shit product mm. that isn't going to completely... St- and this is why Kevin Rudd was mm. so successful. Because Kevin Rudd's version of anything, yes. like he's an inshitification machine. Yes. I mean, he, 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 when he, he was is. leader, the thing immediately became far duller he, just by his involvement. Inshitification personified. He is. He, he is. is. But, but very successfully so. But it's not just politics, right? So you can then look at, say, mobile phone networks, right? Oh, wow. Charles, you really thought about this. And so, you know, we had 3G and 4G. Mm. And in actual fact, for a while, there wasn't just the three major players, but there were always those sort of little bit players. Yeah, I mean, there was Orange and 3 yeah, and various other little and players. And then there was sort of like one tell, and some of them were <laughs> one just... Tell. Remember, one tell was born in shitified. <laughs> it was just like that was Lachlan Murdoch yeah. and James Packer's big attempt to show that they could do better with the technology <laughs> stuff than da- their daddies could. They could not, my friends. But then you know, TPG bought out II Net and Vodafone, and yeah, that's and- all just. One company and Vodafone now. had already bought out three, who were the only innovative mm. people. And then they did a deal with Telstra over the rural network. So essentially, that's all a lock. So it's basically two things. And then Optus is the shittest network anyway. Oh, so, I mean, Optus so, the, the people who sold my details on the dark web. So, I mean, you know, that, that was an amazing piece of inshittification. I mean, Optus is just shorthanded. In fact, that should be in the Macquarie Dictionary for just, like, shit. Surely the word <laughs> floptus is in there because I really enjoyed yeah. that um, during the, when they had the World Cup rights for, for soccer. Anyway, point is that, again, we've reached the situation where 5G has come along and instead of actually building networks that actually give you data, Mm. which is what 5G promised, they've gone, we don't have to anymore because there's a sort of monopoly going on. Yeah. We we can just inshitify our product. It is amazing how, because I've had a 5G phone for a year, it's amazing how totally indistinguishable it is from the regular 4G. Fact, Except, I don't think it takes longer to connect. There's more black spots everywhere. And they've, they've tried to lure everyone from the NBN onto 5G, which we've done at home now. We've got mm. 5G at home. Oh, really? And it is much faster once it's actually connected. Mm. But it's cheaper. And so they've gone, well, we've got so much 5G, we can load everyone's home internet onto it as well, which, of course, mm. they can't. So it's absolutely grinding. Oh, so you're the reason why near our house yeah, the 5G is shit. Yeah, oh, Thanks, mate. That's, that's us. But, Charles, there's another example as well. There's an obvious example of this which is possibly the most inshittified inshittification of all the inshittification burgers we've ever inshittified. Are we talking supermarkets? We can Co- soon. Coles and Woolworths? No, no, there's no. an even worse one. Okay. Charles, you know what it is. 
Oh, the chaser? <laughs> the chaser and the <laughs> Batuta, right. Because <laughs> the shovel is actually really good. Have you noticed yeah. how good the shovel is? No, no, very good. no, Charles, it's airlines. Airlines? Airlines. The, the airlines are the worst oh, duopoly yes, ever. Of you're course. right, yes. You and I spent uh, uh, hours yes. <laughs> with Virgin uh, last year. I had to miss Halloween because Virgin fucked it up. And Qantas is, well, I mean, Qantas is so, so in shit of fight. It's astonishing Kevin yeah. Rudd's not on their board. <laughs> it is the Optus of airlines. <laughs> I think Optus would sue us over that description. <laughs> Qantas is now shorthand for used to be great. Now yeah. fuck them, right? Yeah. Like, well, the inshittification, maybe they should have a Qantas logo in their definition of the inshittification. Well, you can bring out your yeah. Qantas logo that you made. That but, would work. But the reason why I I sort of say there's a whole lot of places that we can talk about inshittification. Tell us what that reason is after this. The Chaser Report. News you can't trust. Well, the reason why I want to sort of expand the definition of inshittification. Yeah. One simple reason, which is to get this word in the Macquarie Dictionary. Of course. We yeah. need this word to yeah. be, to be Oh, you know who we need. You know who we, we need to appoint an official inshittification ambassador. Oh, yes. And I've got to, there's only one person. Who, Charles, who in Australian public life mm. symbolises things progressively getting worse and worse and more and more disappointing uh, to the point of absolute disgust and is also on the public record according to a very amusing story, for having shat himself in a public place. I'm talking, about, of course, about Scott Morrison. Scott Morrison is the official ambassador, ambassador of inshittification. Of inshittification. Yes. We should, there should be a T-shirt with Como giving two thumbs up and just going, inshittify this. <laughs> I mean, because who knew? Who knew you could even swear yourself into ten ministries at once until he did it? No, he yes. found a way to make uh, you to know, monopolise Aaron, ministries. Yes, he, yeah. he, he ran a duopoly with himself, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I think he'd be up for it. He hasn't got a lot on. No. He's the member for Cook. Yes. And, and he's got his book. He's, he's got, got his a... book about um, his walk with Jesus, which uh, I think he'll still have some time on his hands yeah. after that. Yeah, I think, he, I think he'd be up for it. Okay. It's the one thing that he's really made his own. Like if we're looking back on his time as Prime Minister. We should write to him. Let's write to dear him. Dear Scott Morrison, Would we're you? trying to promote the word in shittification as, yes. uh, and get it into the Macquarie Dictionary, and we felt mm. you'd be perfectly poised to assist us with this task. We can even talk about the in shittification era if you like, uh, between when was it, 2018 and 2022. So I think the thing is what we need is for everyone who's listening mm. to on social networks just yes. slip the word in chittification into their vocabulary. And add Scott Morrison as well. And it doesn't matter what you're talking about. Yeah, just, it's just sheer heft. We just need just, enough yeah. people. And it needs to be a sort of broad enough sample size of users of the word. Like I think the whole That's point right. is... We've done our heavy lifting. Yeah, you've got to use it in lots of different contexts as well, yeah. like not just the ones we've listed here. Yeah. Like um, you could have had a bad day and say, yeah. well, I'm in shittified. Yeah, but also it can be like the in of your workplace. Yes. It uh, could just simply be the arrival of your new boss. Or, or the arrival of your current boss. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But yeah. most workplaces probably <laughs> yeah. can be d described in those terms. What would be really helpful as well, and, mm. and I don't know if anyone's up for this, but I, maybe they should be. If there are any academics out there mm. writing academic papers, oh, yes. you should be using Slip the word. It in. You put it in the title of your paper. Yes. So that's a really, I mean, admittedly, it might, you mightn't do as well. Mm. In the paper, but I just think, particularly if you're writing a book or yes. something, I mean, shouldn't the next chase annual be called the Inshittification Principle? Or yes, something? yes, yes. Mm. We can. Maybe totally we need do a that. side book. Yep, we need a side book. Do you think we could register Inshittification dot com? I think so. I think, we we, I think we should trademark it. Maybe we should get Inshittification in as a in concept. Inshittify this. Inshittify this would be a great book. That would be, and also yeah. a, a great kind of movie with Billy Crystal and Robert De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> we also got to get into Hansard. So yes, it's so got to get into Hansard. I'm thinking the Greens are probably the way to get it in because we can write to Scott Morrison, try and get him to slip it in. But don't you that think sounds that sounds so gross. It yeah. sounds unparliamentary, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. But that's – so we need a – We need someone a Someone who's willing to yeah. – you know who'd do it. Oh, Jackie Lambie. Jackie Lambie. Jackie well, Lambie. I was thinking of Bob Catter actually. But, oh, Bob Catter. One yes. of the two of them. Oh, God, yes. Because they've got nothing to lose. No. They're mavericks. Yes. Just get a maverick on it. It'll get done. AI. 
Can we train yes, a, a chatbot to... Can someone write an entire novel <laughs> using the word a lot, which yeah. the AI then plagiarizes? Yeah. That'd be very helpful. We're going to get it out there. It's going to... The, the snowball is going to be released where you're getting shitification into public life. And don't tell anyone that we asked you to because that won't count mm. for the Macquarie Dictionary. Off the back of this uh, and a couple of other things that have shown up during the week, what I have done this morning, Dom, yeah. is I set up a Chaser Report blog. Have you? Yes, just on the Chaser website. Right. The idea is that we'll just occasionally update it from time to time. Whenever something comes up that perhaps it's mainly to do with gloating, right? But I think it oh, will be okay. also a great place to sort of slip the word intuitification all the mm. time in. It, so it's going to be available at chaser.com.au slash report, but it's uh, okay. I haven't I haven't. I thought it was going to be chaser.com.au slash intuitification, but it's yeah. a bit hard. You've got to work out whether it's one one or two T's is, is, is yeah. one question. It's not actually live yet because I just wrote the first. So intuitification, the official spelling of it is with double T, by the way. Yeah, okay. Also known as platform decay. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. It's a form of rent seeking. Yes. Well, we, so the, we could use some money to help so, us pay the rent, actually. So the intuitification of the train system... Would be about the platforms getting worse and <laughs> oh, worse, God. would it? No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, public transport is yeah. probably a very good example. The yeah, yeah. But no, no, so I've set up this blog. Check it out. If you go to chaser.com.au and just click on the menu, you'll be able to see where it is. And the whole idea is it's mainly set up there to gloat. Right? Yeah, sure. And so, for example, earlier in the week, we talked about, well, we came up with a solution for the Middle East crisis. Yes. Which obviously was uh, to transmit the Israeli flag onto Sydney Town Hall. Wasn't that influential? It was very influential because then the next day, so Clover Moore she scotched stopped the it. idea. She stopped, she stopped the idea. She stopped the vision, yeah. She stopped peace in the Middle East. And we came out and we slammed her for it, didn't we? Slammed. Yeah. That was heard in Tel Aviv, Charles. And then, yes, exactly. Exactly, because a day later, the Israeli military also came out against Clover Moore. So, you know, if you're wanting to listen to, you know, a podcast that sets the agenda, then you should probably download The Daily, uh, <laughs> which the New York Times does. But you could also listen to The Chase Report. And on this blog, we'll be able to, because I was pointing out, like, in the first entry on the blog, I pointed out all the times where we've been ahead of the news. We've set the agenda. And it's because the world is so satirical that it, if you describe things in satirical terms, then mm. it usually turns out to be true later We're just on. always making a satirical exaggeration yeah. of things, which yes. turns out to be what actually happens. Charles, I but, love but the fact but I love it, the fact that while they're on the verge of full-scale ground war, can we just note, mm. while th- there are hostages who have been taken and it's basically a huge national emergency in Israel, mm. an IDF spokesman had the time to go on a train radio and slam Clover Moore. Moore. Yeah, I know. Fantastic. Well, you know, it's eye on the prize. But what matters? Yeah. Hearts and minds, Charles. Yeah. Exactly. Hearts and minds. All right. So help us chronicle the intuitification of everything. Yes. But and also gloat on our blog. But my plan is for the blog to essentially take over the internet and become its own platform. At which point oh. we will be able to intuitify it. Charles, this is the least worst idea you've had in a long time. <laughs> our gear is from Rome, we're part of the Iconoclast Network. Help us intuitify everything. There you